Uh, my name is Matthew Gord, and I had the pleasure of knowing Jason very well since uh, 2006. Back then he was my PhD supervisor in Stratified University. I am now a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh, and I have no problem saying that my academic development over the past decade has mostly been successful because of Jason, because of his strong continuous support, mentorship, and encouragement towards personal development. Jason was, above all else, a gentleman, a genuinely nice person, and a brilliant world-leading scholar. It is so rare to find these combinations of qualities in academia. In this tribute, I would like to share with you just three of Jason's many philosophies that struck me the most about him becoming a pioneer in academia, which I got the pleasure of learning from him. So Jason did his PhD in rarefied gas dynamics, deriving higher order and obvious Stokes models such as Burnett and Super Burnett for modeling shock waves in gases. When he became a lecturer in Aberdeen, his head of department asked him to work on other problems for the oil and gas industry. At that time, his ideas and interests were elsewhere, but he followed his head of department's advice and turned his years of work into a spin-off company, which he later sold an American multinational. When he moved to Strathclyde and then Edinburgh, he decided to stick to his gut, lean on his creativity, and pivot his research direction with a new vision in multiscale flow engineering. At many research group dinners of the recent past, and a few bottles of Shiraz Inn, he frequently shared with us his philosophy of hill climbers and belly crossers, which forced him to make these necessary shifts in his research career. I will quote him word for word here. Some scientists and engineers are hill climbers. Highly skilled technically, they follow the established lines of insight that push their work forward. Throughout their careers, they methodolog methodologically take the small steps needed to improve the agreement of theory and experiment. They climb hills in some abstract landscape of scientific fitness. This is normal science. Other scientists, however, are more radical belly crossers. They may not be as skilled technically, but they have strong scientific intuition, they spot the hidden assumptions, and they take a fresh perspective on familiar topics. Science and engineering needs a mix of hill climbers and belly crossers. Too many hill climbers doing normal science, and before long we end up with lots of them sitting on top of local hills, each defending their own territory. We've all probably come across those senior, elderly academics who, on reaching the top of their hill, seem intent not only on admiring the view, but also making sure others don't join them on the summit. <laughs> Leadership is about striking out from intellectually established positions, crossing valleys, and exploring further away, finding new and higher peaks. Jason and I worked extensively on new research software. He had very strong progressive views about this, which we hold through to this day. He used to say, if you try and develop your own code and keep it to all yourself, you will be the only person who ends up using it. That also sends the wrong message to the funding bodies and society who are paying for your research. There were days when you could produce a piece of software on a DVD in shrink-wrapped plastic, with a manual attached and a nice picture on the cover, get these produced, pile them up in your office, and then distribute them via website or mail order. Uh, those days are over. We need a modern approach to intellectual pro property when it comes to software, he used to say. And I think the smart way of exploiting intellectual property is to release the code open source. Our principle is that intellectual property is in the models and the engineering science that we develop, which are published in research papers. He continues to say, if the models are complicated or sophisticated, there will always be plenty of people who won't have the time or energy to get on top of them. That's an opportunity to provide consultancy, to provide training, to, or to establish new collaborations. I think that's a much smarter way of generating income and generating commercial impact. At PhD level, I always looked up to Jason as a captain of a ship, two hands on the ship's wheel, steering us in the right direction. 
When I became a senior postdoc in his research group, quickly did I realize he was much more than that. Instead of directing people around him, I found he supported them, mentored them, and enabled them to realize their best potential. He was so generous with his time and energy on molding the younger researchers into mature individuals, either into fully-fledged academics or industrial researchers. He believed that such meticulous mentorship was the key to everyone's success. He worked really hard at providing strong letters of support and reference to many people around the world at all levels, but in particular, young. The advantage of putting so much energy in mentorship and support is that Jason was able to create an enormous seed bank of natural future collaborations and networks. And so this enabled him to turn what I thought initially was just one ship into a stronger united fleet of international collaborators all traveling in the same direction. Jason had a wonderful academic career and I suspect he had more ambitious plans lined up for the years to come. The advisory boards he set on are literally some of the highest and most influential in the UK. And the awards and accolades he receives are even more impressive, including the prestigious Regis Chair in Engineering, the RAN Chair in Emerging Technologies, and many, many fellowships from the top international engineering and science bodies, just to name a few. Jason um, has raised the bar of success very, very high, but few people know that he wasn't always successful. He mentions openly in workshops at Edinburgh on Brown proposal writing that his first nine research proposals as a new lecturer were unsuccessful. So the takeaway message Jason's life story is behind is if we work hard and remain determined, fiercely ambitious individuals, be radical belly crossers and positions our, position ourselves outside our comfort zone into exciting new areas and opportunities, while mentoring others and building strong, long-lasting relationships, then there is also hope for the rest of us to at least come close to achieving half of Jason's incredible career successes. Thank you and thank you, Jason.